Hi, welcome to this week's Monday Minutes. My name is Kelly. And my name is Jesse. And this week we're going to talk about overdue notice and status triggers in COHA, how to set them up and how they work. This is going to be fantastic. So Jesse, COHA can send up to three overdue notices to our patrons, and those are driven by patron categories. So you have the ability to choose which patron categories get an overdue notice and how long after something is due is when they get the notice. And the other really nice thing about it is you can write different notices for different patron categories. So if you're an academic library and you want a different overdue notice going to your students than you do to let's say alumni, you can write that. If you're a public library, you can have a different notice going to adults versus children. Maybe your children card doesn't get fines, but adults does. There's a really nice way to customize all of that information in here. Yeah, absolutely. And like an ILL, it's great. Yeah. Um, overdue notice status and triggers lives in the tools module over on the left-hand side under patrons and CERC. This can be broken out by branches. So you can see I have the ability to set, select a library from which I'm setting this up for. Overdue notices are sent from the issuing library. So that is what when if you are a multi-branch system, the overdue notice will be driven from that library that it was issued from, the item was issued from. Each notice is set out by its own tab. Any patron category that has been set to yes to receive an overdue notice will appear in this list. The delay is the number of days an item has to be overdue before that overdue notice will send. This is specific. This is not going to look at two plus. It is going to look at when an item is two days overdue. That is when it's going to send it. Now under letter, you're, you're going to have a drop down. This would allow you to choose which notice that you've created in your notices and slips library that will be attached to this individual. So for example, if we use overdue billing for this one for resident, we can select that. And if we had a different one for youth, you'll notice that under letter, we could select that. Now it's really important to remember here, we'll use academic again. If you have a certain category that you don't want to send overdue notices to, or per, maybe you don't want to send the first one, let's say, you can select no notice, then that will not send a notice out. So you do have options when you're customizing these. Yeah. So if you do decide to create another notice, you do that in notices and slips, just make it unique so you can find it in your drop down menu and be able to allocate. This is going to be my standard overdue notice and maybe either academic or you know public. This is my ILL because I can always see an ILL notice being a little different. Now let's talk about the four or five check boxes that you'll see here at the end. The one that's always comes into play here is phone. Sometimes people don't set up the phone option if you're using talking tech or I believe I, they're called- I, Itiva. Itiva, I, Ileon, I think they've changed names. <laughs> um, and, this, and this allows you to set that option up. The first column, let's talk about restrict Kelly, because this, this is an option that we're seeing come in more to play with people going fine free. Absolutely. So at any point during this overdue notice process, COHA can restrict a patron once they received the first notice, the second notice, and or the third. So if you mark restrict, then when this resident patron category is overdue by two days, they will receive that overdue notice and their account will be restricted. There is a system preference that ties into this and, and we'll jump over after we explain the rest of these columns that allows you to say, once that item is returned, so if it, if it does come back and it's checked in, you can either automatically unrestrict them or have the individual go and remove the restriction meaning the librarian or staff member. Email, if you want to send these notices via email, that is the mark point where you're, you will mark it. And then you also have the SMS column to mark an overdue notice to be sent. 
if you do choose to do these other ones over to the far right past the email, make sure those notices have been set up correctly in your notices and slips library and have text for each of these notices to be able to be populated. And we'll, we can jump over and show an example for that too, just to make sure you have that all set up. Absolutely. Now, Kelly, let's talk about the print option because there is a cron job that comes into play here for print. So let's say you have a population where maybe they don't use emails or they just don't have an email address that they wanna share with the library. You can choose an option to print. And what Koha will do is it will look for an email in the account of the individual who has an overdue. If it does not find an email address, it will create a print document and that will be sent to either a library staff member, some people choose to use, you know, circulation at mylibrary.org, and then it will send a complete PDF with either one page or 56 pages, however many individuals have reached that number of prints um, that where an email was not found. Yeah, absolutely. And that could be specific to a lot of libraries just want that third overdue as their print, because they may throw that in the mail on that third one, regardless if they also did an email, they want to do a print as well. So you do have some flexibility, but know that that print column is going to be driven by a cron job and um, just send us, if you are a partner with us, send us a ticket and we can, we can turn that on for you. Okay. Now, again, as Kelly mentioned earlier, you do have that drop down to make customized notices and different default actions for those different branch locations. These tabs um, you can set up. So your first one, maybe you send it at two days. Wow, two days. You may send your second one at that 15 day delay. And then the third one may be at a 45 day delay. So you do have some flexibility again by patron category on how long you want to give them before you send that notice. Now here you'll notice that you are locked into three days that the system provides. We've had a lot of people ask us, what if I wanna send a fourth one? Maybe the fourth one is my bill. I give three reminders and then I send a bill on the fourth one. There's a couple different options you can use with Koha. Remember, you do have a patron email plugin. We'll link to that in our blog post because mm -hmm. we did do a Monday Minute on that. And that would allow you to send a customized message um, out to a specific group of users, let's say for that fourth notice. And then you can also create a specified notice in your notices and slips, create a report, and then we can set up a cron job to have that automatically go out. So you do have some flexibility there and you don't have to be locked into those three notices. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's pop over to the system preferences we mentioned, just so we can tie it all in together. So the first one, um, Jesse mentioned, I didn't have it off the top of my head. So auto remove overdue restrictions. And this says allow or do not allow overdue restrictions. So the restriction placed when an overdue is sent triggered by sent messages to be cleared automatically when all overdue items are returned by a patron. And that's a key part, all overdue items. So you can turn that on to allow that restriction to be removed, or you can keep it there okay? and show you where you can set up the different types of notices that Koha can send. I'm going to pop over to overdue just because we're talking about those overdue. And here are those tabs that you can identify what text, what is going to be the language of each of these types of notices you're sending. Keeping in mind the SMS probably needs to be short and sweet where your email can be a little bit more lengthy. Excellent. Perfect. Okay. Well, Jesse, this was fantastic. I hope everybody's having a great week or going to have a great week and we'll see you next week. See you next week. And as always, if you have any suggestions that you'd like to see for Monday Minutes, please let us know at outreach at bywatersolutions.com.